the Christian paradox. There's a um, dilemma faced by the church that has not been fully recognized, in my opinion, and that is how do we convert the world? within the um, organizational parameters of the church. And by this I mean the church is an organization in which the focus is on personal accountability, personal change. Our major focuses on ourself, on changing ourself. So I think perhaps in the minds of some, to some extent, the feeling is that our methodology would be more consistent with the monk who um, isolates or secludes himself in a uh, tower somewhere or a cave who prays and excoriates himself and uh, endeavors to achieve a spiritual pureness through um, this isolation and total focused on reforming the self but I think on the, I think most Christians, on the other hand, can see that this defeats the purpose. For one thing, Jesus never withdrew from the world. He withdrew from um, the crowds for a time to purify himself, but it was only so that he could go back and re-engage the world. There was a purpose behind the um, re-energization process. It wasn't to make himself perfect, because obviously he was already perfect. So his um, withdrawing was not the uh, same thing as the uh, monk or nun who uh, secludes himself from from reality from the from the workings of society so um, the other thing that we need we could need to consider is that um, God isn't looking for perfect people that's not the the need that he has he has needs for people who engage but again, our um, focus is on self-improvement uh, or um, reducing the sin that we are in. We're not to look at other people's faults so much as our own. So the, the problem is, is how is this reconfigured or channeled into a strategy for uh, changing the world or in, in, in converting the world into faith in Christ. And the um, solution to this, of course, is that in our looking at our own faults, we need accountability, but we can't be accountable if the ones to whom we are accountable aren't holding us to account. I mean, maybe we need to think about this for a, a little while, but if we're embedded in the world, even as the church is embedded at this time, how can the church be a light to the world if the church is being held to account by the world? 
we're only living up to the standard of the world. We're not holding ourselves to a higher standard because we're holding ourselves to the standard of the world. We are an organization embedded in the world, living to the standard of the world. And so there's no way that we're really an organization that the world can say that we are an organization that is living at a much higher standard than them. And in fact, they take quite a lot of pleasure in in suggesting that we are actually not living up to our standard and perhaps in some cases are um, living to a standard even lower than that of the world that we're in. So the strategy that we have to follow is to be accountable to each other primarily, but this has to be a real accounting not to the world standard but to the biblical standard and to do this we need to create an ethicon or an ethical organization an organization that is 100 percent accountable and to do this we need to transfer our capital and by capital we mean not personal property and by personal property we need not property that we actually do need for personal use and that again means what we are actually using on a day-to-day -day basis when we wake up we need clothes we need food we need shelter we need transportation these things are needed these things are being used these are not capital. Capital is access to the personal needs of the individual and the family. So we have to make a line between what are we using and what are we not using. What we are not using is access to personal. It's not personal goods by rights, it's capital. And if we're not using it, it's quite likely it could be used by someone else. This has to be donated to the church, to the body of Christ. We can't be accountable. We can't say we're accountable to the body of Christ if we're not divesting ourselves of excess goods. This is the first step to full accountability. This is the first step we need to take to be a light to the world. So we have to be serious and look at what we have and what is personal and what is capital and the capital we have to divest ourselves from. This is the first and absolutely ne necessary step. We need to capitalize the church. And until we capitalize the church, there's no accountability and it's just a kind of a play acting to say that we're accountable if we haven't capitalized the church. So we capitalize the church with all of our excess goods and, and time and everything else. And by time I mean if we have 10 hours free, we need to give this to the church and say we have this 10 hours, this is donated to the church. And we need to make ourselves available for that um, for, to the church for that time. The church then reconfigures these donations into missions, into ways of doing works in faith. And works done in faith are works done in the service of the body of Christ but their works done that are accountable, they're being accountable because they're works that create value and it's value that can be quantified and measured. That's how we are accountable. So um, to get back to the thrust of the uh, this video is that 
we build the church by building in accountability. We make ourselves accountable and we bring in others and get them to make themselves accountable. And the growth of the church is through growing the accountability that we all have. And when people come into the church, they divest themselves of their excess assets to become accountable. And it's this growth in accountability that creates the ethical city and, of course, the church. And that's um, the way we overcome that uh, paradox or dilemma. But it's only, and, and I, I just want to stress that it's only a, a dilemma because we're not taking that first step of divestment of capitalizing the church.